okay so welcome back we will now start the lecture 2 and i hope my audio is audible to you and the slide is also visible so in this segment we will talk more about the copolymers and their morphology topology and some of the properties right so it will cover basically synthesis and properties of copolymers and ionomers ionomers are very interesting which we will discuss it will discuss polymer structure and morphology physical properties of polymer and structure property relationship structure property relationship or spr is very important for any industrial application of a polymer which i will we will discuss slowly this session will be little bit of technically heavy so in case in any of the slides you have confusion please raise your hand and put the query in the chat option which i will try to answer during the session <laughs> so what are block copolymers right so block copolymer currently are very very interesting topics because they allow you to combine the properties of two different worlds let's say if you form a block copolymer for using a peptide and a protein so peptide is a biomolecule protein is a uh, peptide and polymer uh, peptide is a biomolecule and polymer is a synthetic molecule you can combine the properties of both the worlds so people have combined make made protein polymers so it combines the properties of proteins and then synthetic polymers also in the same line they have combined carbohydrates with synthetic polymers carboxymethyl cellulose and all those things have been modified and to make polymers which can be used for multiple advanced level applications right <coughs> now whenever you form a block copolymer then their question comes comes about the uh, question comes about the miscibility of the polymer right so at this point i would like to know how many of you know what is miscibility and immiscibility right if you know about miscibility or immiscibility you can put a put y in the chat or you put no so that i know where to start from the query is whether you are aware of what is miscibility and what is immiscibility if everyone knows then i will not have to explain otherwise i will explain that also in detail i'll wait for one or two minute and then i'll carry on okay so as there is one no answer one negative answer so i will explain <laughs> right so let's consider uh, we will start from the solubility and insolubility to understand this concept so solubility means when i take a solid and put it in water if it it, it represents a transparent clear solution they say this molecule is soluble in water like if we take sugar and put it in water and start the solution so it will be soluble but if we take chalk dust or if we take sand and put it in water and then we start it it will never be soluble so it is insoluble similarly whenever you take two block copolymers or two homopolymers and mix them if they are miscible then they will result in op uh, optically transparent film like the soft contact lenses they are made of miscible block copolymers made one of the component is poly 2 hydroxymethyl ethyl poly 2 hydroxy ethyl methacrylate right so when two blocks are miscible it will be transparent and they, it will result in a transparent optically transparent film and when the two blocks are not miscible it will result in optically non transparent or opaque film you cannot see through if you think closely the windshield of a car is made of a the coating on the windshield of a car is made of a miscible block copolymer because without that 
um, without that coating whenever there is any scratch on the surface or there is any heat on the surface of the windshield it will crack and the driver and the co-passenger will get injured but it generally doesn't happen windshield never crack open it cracks it breaks but it breaks in a brittle manner so that there is no cut injury we'll go ahead <coughs> in this slide i am i used to discuss about the reactivity ratios right so let's have a of what reactivity ratio is okay so let's understand what is reactivity ratio so let's say if you have two monomer right one of the monomer is monomer 1 the second monomer is monomer 2 so for our case we consider this second one is m2 can self propagate and third one is they can cross you get a polymer having having a high amount of m1 then the result says that the reactivity ratio of of m1 is higher compared to m2 that's why m1 reacted faster right if m2 is enriched in the final polymer mixture then you say the reactivity ratio of m2 is higher than m1 if both of them are similarly same are present in similar amount in the uh, final polymer mixture then you say their ratio is same or their reactivity ratio is same <laughs> in the same line we take to the next concept which is macro initiator what is macro initiator right if you take let's say tertiary alkyl bromide tertiary alkyl bromide generates a tertiary alkyl radical and this radical is very very stable which you already claimed because that is already discussed similarly if you take a polymer molecule at, and at the chain end you put a halide molecule right so then you what you generate you generate a radical here after releasing of the halide so this radical is called macro initiator now if you if you have understood the concept of monofunctional and bifunctional molecule <laughs> then it is very easy for you to understand that this mol this particular molecule can give rise to a linear di block copolymer the first block may be like this and the second block may be like this right but this particular molecule in the second example this is bifunctional molecule this had initiator here and here also that's why it allows polymer to grow from both the ends right now <laughs> and this molecule is a gradient copolymer initially the concentration of this blue species is higher and finally the concentration of the red species is higher this is called a gradient copolymer now i want you to have a very close look on this slide so that i can explain when it starts please have a look okay <laughs> so let me go one by one uh, with this example just so if you if you see the first one the first example is uh, for a linear polymer or homopolymer the second one is for a brasco brasco polymer where a, there is a backbone of black ones and then the polymer chains emanated from that third one is an example of a surface modification where the surface has been modified to make some molecule in this one fourth one is a graft copolymer where there is a backbone and in the both side you have chains right fifth one is a star polymer like a jellyfish now the interesting part now the question right so this is an image this one can you tell me the analytical method or analytical instrument name using which this image has been taken you can write your answer in the chat the question is can you tell me which analytical technique has been used to take this image i will wait for couple of minutes
Okay, one more minute and then go ahead. Let me see the answers. Okay, <laughs> so we have some answers. Uh, first one is given by Navtej. He is saying it is ACM. So Navtej, if you can please unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what is ACM? Scanning electron microscopy. Okay. And how can you explain the fundamental principle of this technique for the class? Uh, we use the electron beams and we study the surface morphology of any of the substance in it. Okay, great. So is there a limit of how small this ACM can detect? Can I de detect a sample having a diameter of one picometer using ACM? I am mm, not pretty well sure about the numeric value, but it should have some limit because we are using electrons. So it should have some limit of precision to detect something. Okay, okay fine. Good. So let me go to Sahaj. Sahaj, if you can please unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, Sahaj. What is TM? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we were discussing with uh, Sahaj about TM. So Sahaj, please unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what is the working principle of TM? At that point, my connection got disconnected. Yeah, if you can explain once more. Sir, it's same like ACM, but uh, uh, instead of surface, it can also detect the image of uh, inner inner layer. Not only surface, but it can also detect if the if the size of our sample is very small. Then I think it can also detect that kind. Okay, so you are saying that in terms of size, TA, TM is better than ACM. Is that your Answer for ultra yes, small sir. sizes, TM is better. Yes, sir. I think so. Okay, so what is HRTM? What is HRTEM? Any idea? No, sir. I don't. Know. Okay, fine. Yeah. Fine, no problem. Let me see other answers, then I will explain. So the next answer is from uh, just hold on. Okay. Uh, Swami Nathan, if you can please uh, unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Yeah. So your answer is correct, but I wanted to know what instrument you will use to image this thing. Right? So this there is an image, this one which I highlighted. Your answer is yes, correct. This is a phase contrast or <laughs> everything is fine. But what kind of uh, instrument you will use to get this uh, image. Will you try to answer? I think uh, we use uh, confocal microscope. Confocal microscope. Okay, interesting. Why you think that you will use confocal microscope? No, actually, I see people using that for face contrast images. So I just thought maybe I can guess. I took a guess. So I am not sure whether you can see it. The scale bar is 50 nanometer in this case. Is it visible in the slide? No, I think. Yes, sir. It is visible when you visible. zoom. So do you think in confocal you can get that high resolution? Because let's consider if you take a mobile phone camera and try to image the wall. If you go 50x, the image will be blurry, right? I don't think so. It's, up, it's beyond its resolution. Huh. So, okay, fine. So, let me see. Okay, please mute yourself because there are two more answers. Uh, I will discuss. So, Avantika, if you can please unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Can you please explain why you chose chromatography? Sir, I am not pretty sure about this. Uh, in SAM or TEM, we use uh, this technique to study about the surface, but there is limitation of... Uh, that nanoparticle is used in this technique, I think. So okay, so I'll... I'll fine. fine, so please mute yourself. So I'll answer to the... Uh, I'll give an answer to the answers given by Avantika and Sandeepan together. Because both of them chose chromatography. 
see whenever you have to see something you have to take an image so you need microscopy or imaging techniques and chromatography is not an imaging techniques okay <laughs> so this part is clear okay so i am sorry there was a network issue so i got disconnected okay so now i will answer the answers of i will consider the answers of navtej sahaj and swaminathan swaminathan talked about phase contrast that is good enough <coughs> confocal microscopy will not work because that cannot give you that high resolution now coming to acm and tm right because they are very very close computers <coughs> right so in terms of resolution or how low you can detect in tm the resolution is higher and i would like to mention two things here so there is F acm and there is fecm field emission scanning electron microscopy fecm gives higher resolution compared to acm now in tm there is another thing called hrtm which i asked to um, sahaj hrtm is high resolution transmission electron microscopy so this is basically an hrtm image where even the polymer chains are visible if you look very critically you can see the polymer chains also here right and this is a very beautiful image and you could think of the researcher who might have spent hours after hours to get this image to see something <coughs> with their own eye okay so this was the answer they used hrtm but all of you tried nicely and i am happy to know that you know about the this analysis techniques especially navtej and sahaj okay okay so now we go to the next one star polymers now again you have an image this one where nice star fishes are visible so i put the same question again so which instrument is used to take this image please write the answer then we will discuss quickly now you can write the answer in 1 minute i think you are an expert now which analysis technique is used for taking this image the star polymers okay, i will wait for few more seconds think and answer Okay so let me see what kind of answers we got Okay um Okay so the answers are uh, uh and for band length I have doubt Okay Okay I'll come to you Sahaj uh, Okay ha <laughs> ha Okay by the time remaining answers come I will discuss with Sahaj and uh, Swaminathan first Sahaj if you can please unmute yourself Yes sir. Yeah, can you explain why you chose HRTM? <coughs> Similarly as previous one I am thinking so that uh, we can choose the high resolution transmission electron microscopy to detect the image but uh, I am uh, using also XERD cause I think uh, here we are also visualizing about the bond length so can we do so? So you are saying AC XRD What is that? Single electron, single electron XRD. Oh, single electron XRD. <laughs> you can do that, but uh, AC XRD is technically not a technically not an imaging technique. It's a technique yes, where sir, you can sir. identify the bond length, but it's technically not an imaging technique. So that goes out. So you are with HRTM. Yes, sir. That's HRTM and uh, for bond length. I mean, if you want, if you also. here uh, these uh, means uh, bonds are also means x from x uh, where attached uh, so it seems like bonds so i am thinking so that bond length so i just mentioned that okay okay fine good good try let me hear from you mute yourself let me hear from swaminathan swaminathan if you can explain your answer actually it looks like it's giving a morphology so generally this aggregates morphology afm gives this kind of patterns so i thought maybe it is so what is afm atomic force microscope 
can you explain the working principle of afm i am not exactly sure about that sir but you can try see there is no grading today the exam will happen on 21st so it's better we clear up our doubts before the exam that's why i am giving you a platform to clear your doubts okay try how afm is done is measured i think it is something like uh, you um, something like you uh, give us some kind of a stress and uh, see how it responds from the the magnitude of the force okay yeah it's good very good i will explain <coughs> very good you mute yourself see if you try to answer then uh, you can reach somewhere okay so let me ask uh, sandeepan i will answer i will come back to your answer so enough sandeepan if you can Uh, unmute yourself yes sir yeah. yeah so can you explain why you chose acm sir in acm we can study the morphology of the substance so here we study the morphology okay that's a pretty straight forward answer good okay now you mute yourself and let me explain what is going on here right okay <laughs> see if you look at this image very very closely right <coughs> what you are seeing here acm you see the morphology it's absolutely fine hrtm also you see the morphology that is also ex- ex- absolutely fine right but what you are seeing here if you have uh, focused on the previous answers so you are see- seeing the phase changes for that the best available technique is atomic force microscopy where as your friend explained it starts with a cantilever it's like a small stand and on the top of the stand you have a tip and that tip touches the surface right and there are two way you can measure the af contact mode and tapping mode right so how you how based on the force you put in on the surface and how it respond to you measure and based on the measurement you prepare the height profile and from there you have an idea how this is looks like all together what i like to mention if, if you wish to investigate phase diagrams or morphology acm is good enough but that gives a broad picture tm is tm is better but that doesn't give a absolutely true picture end of the day what you we go for we go for a 3d analysis that is afm right end of the day although it looks like a 2d 3d acm and tm will give you a 2d image only we go for the afm to get the true 3d picture so at this point i go away go, go forward and we discuss about the development of block copolymer synthesis remember why block copolymer is important because here we can combine properties of two different types of homopolymers right it's like a hybrid but it but a true hybrid covalently linked true hybrid so the story goes long from 1952 <coughs> from 1952 to 1984 people tried to people tried to synthesize many block copolymers huh? based on styrene butadiene in one of the lectures uh, at the end part of this i will explain what are the uses of this kind of materials they synthesize styrene butadiene and many other things in the second one second phase 1988 to 1989 1989 at that time people got to know how to use micelles for drug delivery and different applications so they prepared molecules which can lead to micellarization I want you to have a close look on this slide and i will discuss what is going on have a close look what is going on okay <coughs> okay so i will i will explain what's going on here so basically we discussed about the macro initiator right so consider this molecule let me take the pointer this molecule as your macro initiator this is a polymer 
which has a chain end now based on your need you can modify the chain end to make sh which can be used subsequently to make hydrogen to make ci to make oh to make oh whatever you like right so now if you consider this ci can be used to for atrp or iodine transfer polymerization the once you make a polymer with oh you can do anything oh can be coupled with carboxylic acid or any other molecule right so this gives you the possibility of many many different synthesis of block copolymers right one of the example is shown here uh, how we can make the block copolymer now we'll discuss briefly about ionomers what are ionomers ionomers are molecules or polymers which contains ions it's very very easy and these molecules are having very wide applications starting from fuel cell membrane fuel cell catalyst binder electrolyzer and electrolyzer membrane at this point i will ask the next question my question is what is a fuel cell if you if you are aware of right can you write the answer in the chat what is a fuel cell single line answer then i will discuss so if my audio is clear then my question is what is a fuel cell if you if you are aware of fuel cell you write yes and if you are not aware of fuel cell you write no so that i can explain the working principle of a fuel cell i will wait for one more minute because i am getting few answers which needs to be discussed so we'll discuss okay by the time answers come i will start discussing them so uh, navtej if you can unmute yourself yes sir yes if you can explain your answer uh, so that setup or any cell or battery in which the chemical reactions produce electric effects like due to the moment um, movement of electrons current is produced mm hmm and that type of cell is known as uh, in which we use the few uh, without combustion the electrochemical reaction produce energy okay great so can you tell me as you as you gave a correct answer can you tell me that what kind of application this fuel cell can have any idea any rough idea uh, yes sir i guess i have read somewhere that hydrogen based cells fuel cells can be used as rocket propellants it gave it gives very high thrust to rockets if it is used in a beneficial direction okay that's that's good okay thank you you can please mute yourself <laughs> okay sahaj is little bit confused i i will explain swaminathan if you can please unmute yourself yes sir yes can you please explain what is fuel basically cell? something like if you have an electrochemical cell it it has a redox reaction which is taking place now here you are using a some kind of a compound which can undergo this electrochemical reaction through which the energy is for example methanol fuel cell i think there are different thing when they do the electrochemical reaction through which you you give out the energy electrical energy and that is been used for many devices great any application um not uh, think think maybe you have a minute uh, any any proposed application which you can think of where it can be used wild gas also uh, it's maybe, maybe vehicles <laughs> vehicles and you are correct i will explain how it is used thank you next we will move to uh, anjali if you can please unmute yourself Yes, sir. Yeah, can you explain your answer? Uh -huh. What is a fuel cell? Yeah, Anjali, can you please explain your answer? Sir, it's a device which can convert the chemical energy into electrical energy. Only electrical energy, or any other energy? 
Sir, I'm not sure, but technical energy. Okay, fine, fine. Please mute yourself. Uh, Sandeepan, can you please unmute yourself? Yes, sir. Can you please uh, un explain your answer? Sir, fuel cell used as battery. <laughs> fuel cell battery we are used in many purposes. Okay. In what purpose? What kind of purpose? What is the end application of this material of of this device? Where where it can be used? Okay, the audio is not clear, so I will explain now. Huh? Please mute yourself. <laughs> so, fuel cell is a system or a device which can generates which can generate energy in simple terms, right? The one which are being talked about most is the hydrogen fuel cells, which generates hydrogen as energy. And as one of you pointed out correctly, hydrogen fuel cells can be used. or is being used in japan to drive cars also right and in india also there has been extensive research on this hydrogen based fuel cells and sooner or later we will see this is being employed there are few prototype cars which are available in india also where hydrogen is being used as a fuel cells right so that fuel cell membranes are the future right if you think very very basic level if you take a sulfonic acid sulfonic acid has a loosely bound h plus ion that can be converted to generate energy clear okay fine so we'll move ahead <coughs> so polymer structure and morphology we'll discuss slowly now this slide contains few co concepts which i am sure every one of you are aware of but i will just mention for the class right broadly there are two kinds of material or two kinds of polymeric materials one is amorphous one is crystalline right and then it has two kinds of transition one is glass transition temperature or tg where a um, a amorphous polymer changes the phase and another one is melting temperature where the polymer can melt a crystalline polymer melts basically right now i want you to look at this slide carefully so that i can discuss i will look at this slide then i will discuss <coughs> okay now it's time so silica is normal silica we take a crystalline polymer we make a blend with silica to make some molecule next one is mwcnt mwcnt is multi walled carbon nanotube this is one of the toughest material there are two kinds of cnt one is single walled carbon nanotube second one is multi walled carbon nanotube multi walled means it's, it's a mixture single walled is the purest one but single walled is little bit costly <coughs> these are the few techniques using which you can study polymer morphology right now tell me again this is a question for you so what analytical technique is used to take this image this one highlighted one can you write it in the chat so sin is what analytical technique is used to take this image so you have 2 minutes to answer let's see how many of you can get the correct answer based on the discussion which already happened i assume most of you will get the correct answer but let's see okay so let me check the answers <laughs> one by one okay um okay still answers are coming so i'll wait for one or two minute Okay. 
ओके सो लेट मी टेक द आंसर्स वन बाय वन स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम स्वामीनाथन स्वामीनाथन इफ यू कैन प्लीज अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ यस सर या कैन यू टेल मी व्हाई इट इज एफएम एक्चुअली आई थिंक इट गिव्स सम काइंड ऑफ अ रफ सरफेस वेदर स्मूथ और नॉट सो व्हेन यू ट्राई टू प्रोब विद दिस थिंग दे विल हैव अ डिफरेंट पैटर्न्स बिकॉज़ आई थिंक इट इज लाइक दैट आई कैन सी सम डिफरेंट uh modes in the surface like so okay fine so please mute yourself uh narendra if you can please unmute yourself yes sir. narendra sahu if you can hear me yes yeah yeah can you please explain why it is bet what is bet by the way what is full form of bet So, what is the uh, full form of bet sir so we can say it so scientist name um okay full form is fine so can you tell me why it is bet how how bet can be used to measure the morphology sir so actually it is used for to surface morphology used for BT is used for surface morphology. Yes. No, I will. I will explain. So I think you are little bit confused. BT is a technique which measures surface area, pore volume, and pore diameter of any porous molecule. Okay. Okay. Yes. BT cannot measure surface morphology. Okay. Fine. so next is koshik is fine if okay which is this uh, sahaj kumar sahaj please unmute yourself yes sir so why it is hrtm sir uh, hrtm sir i think uh, it's uh, high sir basically uh, it's measure the high resolution image so i think i am thinking of so that so i have i am i have highlighted the yellow image can hrtm generate a yellow image no sir then so it's hrtm part is a wrong answer okay yes sir let me go to navtej uh, okay navtej yes, please sir. unmute yourself So why it is ACM? I have the same question. Can ACM generate a yellow image? The this question I am not aware about that whether it can generate yellow or something other color. But as we can see that hundred nanometer size in the nearby image has been shown for B image. So ACM is generally used to measure the size of nanomaterials less than hundred or hundred nanometer range. Mm hmm. Okay, so your logic is uh, logic is correct, but okay, I will update it. So generally, uh, whenever you take a image of uh, using ACM or HFTM, the it it generally doesn't show 3D topography. And this image, if you look closely, it is showing a 3D topography. It's like a hilly region, right? So this is AFM image, right? So okay, Sandeepan, I have answered it. Clear? Okay let me go ahead then uh with next part <coughs> okay so this part will act as a interactive model right so my question is what is the polymer used here write it in the chat what is the polymer which is used here you have 2 minutes to answer Okay so you have one more minute to answer it what kind of uh, polymer is used to make this material
Okay, so let me see the answers. Oh, great. So everyone got the correct answer. PVC in pipes. Okay, fine. Good. So we are moving in correct direction. <laughs> so this material is PVC, polyvinyl chloride, right? Now let me ask you a simple question. Let me put it off. Do you think this is, let's consider this one is a debit card or credit card. So how many layers are there in this material, right? How many layers of polymer is there in that material? You can have an option from one to 10, right? Just now write the type the number. How many layers you think this material has? This debit card or credit card? So you will have two minutes to answer this. My question is how many layers of polymer you have in a credit card or debit card? And let me see the answer. Your options are from one to 10. Okay, please type your answers quickly. Okay, so once I have few more answers, I will start explaining because this is very interesting. Because all of us use yes, debit card, credit card, many other cards, right? Okay, so let me start. Understanding. Okay, the highest number is written by Sahaj, so he will start. Sahaj, please unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, can you explain why it is 10? Sir, I think and debit or credit card or any card is flexible, but it not enough. If uh, it is in, you have just uh, given a cent between 1 to 10, then if you use just uh, 2, 3 layer of polymer, then I think it will be easier to break it or bend it very much easily. So I guess that's why. Okay, so now my, my second question to, okay, let me ask Swaminathan, then I will come back to you. Okay, please mute yourself. Swaminathan, if you can unmute yourself. Yes, sir. So why it is two? I thought two layers surrounded by that uh, strip, whatever, That's credit card. So let me ask you a question. No, I will ask that question to Narendra. Okay, please mute yourself. So Narendra, please unmute yourself. Yes, sir. So why do you think it is three? So maybe three layer is sufficient, I thought. So I am considering, so the thickness is not required. Three layer is sufficient. I will explain why thickness is not required. Uh, uh, Narendra, three layer is sufficient. So what kind of uh, properties these layers have? Or your debit card has? Mm. So why why um, can't it be one layer? Why can't it be single layer of PVC? Can it be a single layer of PVC? Maybe, sir, because of its it is durable. That's all. So okay. So after I explain this answer, don't take a scissor and cut your debit card or credit card, huh? Let me go yes. to Naftej. Naftej, please unmute. Yes, sir. See, this quantitative thickness is not required. The answer will depend on what property or function a debit card or credit card has. Right? So now tell me how many layers you want in your credit card. So still, I didn't get what you want to say. Okay. So I want to say how many layers of PVC are there in a debit card? Yeah, that is fine. The explanation you, which you gave just right now. That we no, I did not give any explanation as of now. I am just asking the question. I will give the explanation. No, sir. I am not able to answer it yet. Okay, okay fine. No problem. Mute it. Sandeepan, can you unmute yourself? Yes, sir. Why it is more than one? Why it can't be one? Sir, because increasing the strength of the credit card. So we increase the number of layers. Okay. okay, so you need multiple layer because you want to increase the strength. No other function is required in a credit card, right?
so flexibility is also we keep in mind okay, okay fine let me see koshik you answer why it is 3 Yeah, I thought that uh, one layer will be there. So from uh, there, the secure systems will be. Uh, I mean, uh, it will be present on that layer, and that will be coated with uh, from both sides with the two layers. So three layers will be enough for that. Okay. Okay. So now let me explain <laughs> what your credit card or debit card contains. Right. Listen very carefully. Uh, especially Navtej and Swaminathan. So your credit card or debit card contains few layers to give it mechanical rigidity. Few layers to make it super hydrophobic so that your debit card or credit card does not dissolve in water because eventually it catches water sometimes. There are few layers which contains the information or the magnetic chip. There is a layer which contains the Wi-Fi enabled device so that you can use it as a touchpad. there is a layer which contains your name right that's why multiple layers are required in addition to that there are very thin layers which are the adhesives which binds this all of this layer but please don't cut open your credit card or debit card to find out how many layers it is once you have a debit card which has expired then only you can cut open and slightly using a uh, simple uh, blade or knife you can identify how many layers are there all together it is between 6 to 9 so now, so now let me go back again navtej can you please unmute yes sir is it clear now yes sir now it's clear okay, okay. <laughs> then we will go ahead thank you okay so these things are written here i will okay now we are we have come to the next image this is an image of a parachute right so my question is my question is not on the nature of the polymer which is used my question is what kind of property you need in this material which is used here in this umbrella what kind of property you are looking for can you name those property can you type it in the chat what kind of property is required to make of a polymer which is used in this parachute okay i'll wait for 2 minutes लेकिन सर एक प्रॉब्लम है कि सबके लैपटॉप में अभी वो लैन कनेक्शन नहीं होता आजकल जो नया आता है ना उसमें लैन कनेक्शन नहीं है जैसे मेरे में नहीं है ओके okay. तो एक अलग से एडाप्टर लगाना पड़ेगा पास में ओके सो लेट मी सी द आंसर्स ओके सो द आंसर ओ आंसर्स आर गुड स्ट्रेचेबिलिटी इज अ करेक्ट आंसर नरेंद्र hydrophobicity is correct uh, foldable i didn't get it aditi if you can unmute yourself uh, sir uh, when uh, uh, sir because uh, we can keep it in bag also so acha acha that's all okay fine then i got it fine hydrophobicity is fine elasticity strain resistance to wind okay that is also correct tens uh swaminathan navtej your answer is correct that's why i'm not asking you to unmute uh, swaminathan please unmute yourself hi sir yeah. so what is tensile strain tensile strain is a property whether you need higher tensile strain or lower tensile strain that is should be the answer what is your answer uh, now it should withhold the people who is there because whatever the woman okay. is using the parachute like with according to their weight okay fine. fine fine good enough so let's go to sahaj sahaj please unmute yourself yes sir i will ask one by one so resistance towards what sir towards heat or uh, wind cause uh, in parachute let's suppose uh, if there is too much heat there then i think uh, it will also resist towards heat and if there is wind then also resist towards wind 
So only heat and wind. So your parachute material can be biodegradable. So rain comes, your parachute dissolves. Is that okay? No, sir. No. So you no, did not. Sir. No one mentioned that property. Oh, one one of you mentioned hydrophobic. Okay, okay, fine. Ha. Huh. So it should be hydrophobic and non-biodegradable. Okay. What is uh, durability? Can you explain? Elaborate. Sir, how long how long it it uh, lives? Okay. And what is malleability? means it's foldable or not okay great fine this is good enough thank you please mute yourself so we'll go to the next image soon so this material is polyamide <laughs> which is used here okay next image is spectacle and my same question is what kind of property this part of the spectacle should have where is the pointer okay here this part of the spectacle should have consider this spectacle lens or the this is not made of a glass right this is made of a plastic material so what kind of property this plastic material should have can you name this property you have 2 minutes again to answer the question is identify properties of a, of the material which can be used in the spectacle lens non glass spectacle lens i should mention okay now the answers are let me see where is the okay so the answers are transparency it is correct scratch resistance is very good correct <laughs> EV protection is correct. Hydrophobicity is obviously correct. Transparent, okay. Um, so can, okay, transparent, fine. Okay, so you are aware of it. Great. One property is missing. Can anyone type it? Everything else is covered except one property. Think of it. It is very interesting. The one which is missing. Some sort of polar. Okay, fine. But there is another property which is missing. For that property only, people migrated from glass lenses to plastic lenses. Light sensitivity. Okay, it has to be explained. Swaminathan, please unmute. I mean, please explain. Like what is light, if light going, sensitivity? So, for example, if we have any photo acrylic material which is Achha, photochromatic, it is fine. Okay, got it. Photochrom. Okay, light weight is correct. Uh, okay, <laughs> lightweight is correct. I will give you some clue. The property which is missing is related to sometimes the spectacle falls, right? To prevent this spectacle from getting damaged, what property you need? Think of it. That is very, very interesting. Okay, still now there is no answer. Okay, another clue. If you make this uh, material make of, made of glass, then it will break, right? And if you make it based on plastic, it will not break. So it is almost unbreakable, right? Or force resistant. Now this is fine. So this material is basically a polycarbonate, right? So here I would like to mention about this molecule. This molecule is bisphenol A or BPA. So after today's lecture session over is over at 6:50. What you should do? You should start looking for your tiffin boxes, food containers which are made of plastic. Check whether they are BPA free plastic or not, because this molecule BPA or bisphenol A is highly carcinogenic. Or heavily carcinogenic, right? And this plastic, this polycarbonate, which is not, which is made of, sorry, but BPA free polycarbonate is costly. But ideally, we should use BPA free plastic only to use to use them as a food container or resistant that it is used to make bulletproof glasses or protection devices and all those things, right? So at this point of time, I will stop. This session is over. I will be back. In